Hey guys, Dusty Baker across the Bison. Welcome back to the channel. What I'm gonna do this morning is I'm gonna get the since uh, we just brought Big Joe home and I've got the big herd still caught up here in our, our catch area, kind of the main area um, when you pull into the property. I'm gonna get them to come in here. Uh, where the yearlings typically can and that way I can put them out through this gate over here and they're gonna head out where the yearlings were so I'm gonna do some opening of the gates and uh, get them out and then I'm gonna open some more gates uh, basically to get the yearlings to replace where Big Joe and them were a bigger pasture and, and a little bit more grass of, of what's left anyways the big guy. Got some followers this morning. Whole crew. One house dog. One sort of bison dog. Supposed to be a guard dog. Come on, babies, let's go. Come on. What are you guys doing? You guys are gonna slow us down here. So once I get them to to go back up there where their family is, um there's Hoss right there. We're gonna get them to come through this gate and I'm gonna let them in here. And they're going out and into this pasture basically. So as soon as we get these calves out, oh, good timing. As soon as we get these guys out, we can do that. Go with your mamas. Are you trying to get them, Elsa? Here they go. Mom's calling them. Here they go. Perfect. I'm gonna go shut that gate. I had a feeling this may happen whenever the big herd moves. So do they. It's been kind of hard catching them. All right, this gate's open now. It only, usually only takes a couple. Looks like some of them are going up there where the big herd was. And at least I got some of them right here. They'll start coming in here. They're too curious.
one. One screws it up. There she goes, good. A lot of gate opening, a lot of gate shutting. A lot of not pulling up enough.
Uh, now we got the yearlings finally out and running. Man, they had a fun time. I had a feeling that they would get after it. So here is a big Joe and his crew. I know they're loving this right now because this cell feeder for the uh, yearlings. But now I'm going to open up this gate and they're going out into pasture one, basically where the yearlings have been. So we'll uh, let them go. That is one of my favorite things to do is let the bison out in a new pasture. And uh, the yearlings have never been in that pasture. And so it was so fun to uh, watch them run. And uh, it just makes me think about uh, the history of the bison. It just makes me, it makes me go a hundred years back and imagine them uh, roaming and running um, in, in, in herds of hundreds and thousands. Speaking of that, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing uh, Big Joe uh, and the process of him going through uh, the fertility test and and all that and then not only that but while we were there uh, the visit we had with Doc Parsons what a uh, what a very very smart guy a very experienced guy with a lot of knowledge that we all can learn from and uh, I hope you learn something from him because every time that I work with him I do learn from him and uh, we talk about history um, Guys, whatever we have left in those bison today, people like Doc and, and myself, hopefully, and, and lots of other bison producers, we're trying to strengthen uh, the culture of the bison, uh, the, the genus species itself, bison, bison. We're trying to preserve this awesome animal, America's mammal, guys. 
And uh, so that's why I do what we do. That's why Doc does what he does. And um, obviously we create a business out of it as well. But how convenient it is to have somebody like that around. And uh, that's what we're trying to do is to preserve uh, the bison and, and the way you do that is you keep up with the genetics you keep up with your animals and uh, You see that you you can keep up with the parentage and you can trace back uh, All these animals if you just simply by pulling the hair on your animals when you work them and sending them off you can get the DNA back on those bison you can match up lineages and that's how you can preserve and strengthen the bison today just by simply pulling hair and registering your bison with the NABR. No, I'm not at the ranch, but uh, we are on a little weekend vacation, a little getaway um, with the family and some friends. But uh, I just wanted to share that with you and just a one of my favorite things with you, letting those bison out and capturing those moments of them running and those yearlings, they can run for a long time. I know you are happy uh, about a Big Joe, as well as me, about um, him being fertile, which is good. And then something that I've learned is, even though we had a scare of him possibly not being fertile, I did learn about, I did learn about the cows not accepting the bull sometimes, and that's new to me. Um, unlike cattle, that's typically not a problem, but in bison, sometimes if the bulls haven't been around those cows very long, um, they may not accept them. And uh, I think that's the situation we're into. And maybe we have some pregnant cows. I don't know. Maybe they're just uh, really late. I noticed uh, Doc is having some late and some people I know in Oklahoma. Um, and the park is having some bison late. So maybe uh, maybe that's just what's going on. We have some uh, late bloomers. But uh, the good thing is, is Big Joe is very fertile. And... Uh, we are very lucky to have Doc so close to us and the knowledge that he has. And um, I'm going to spread as much of that knowledge that I can learn from him uh, for the NBA, which is the National Bison Association, and the NABR, which is the North American Bison Registry. So if you are a bison producer out there um, and you're interested in registering your bison with the NABR, we would love to help. We encourage it, obviously. And we do this so that we can preserve and strengthen the bison today. Thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of this journey and um, following us along on everything that we do for these awesome animals. We'll see you guys soon.